so welcome. I'm Mary McClintock. I'm a member of the planning, Conway Planning Board. This is, um, we're doing, pub, we're actually doing two public hearings tonight about three different proposed uh, bylaw revisions, and I'll explain more about those. Um, but you're, this is the meeting you're at. If you thought you were coming to the like Zumba class or something, I'm sorry, but it's not, this is the wrong one. Um, although we could do that as a break at some point. We can, somebody could lead a little dance or something, that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. So we just wanna say welcome. So I'm Mary McClintock. I'm a um, member of the planning board. Beth Gershman is the chair. Wave your hand about Beth. Um, the other members are Jennifer Mullins. Wave your hand about. Um, Susan Fenton is a planning board member. Bill Mabius, I think, has not yet joined us. Um, he's another member of the planning board and our esteemed associate member, Joe Strogowski. Um, wave your hand about Joe, please. Um, there you go. And I also wanna recognize um, we have two select board members here. Um, Bob Armstrong is the chair of the select board. Wave your hand about. And Phil Cantor is a member of the select board. And I think that's who is here from other Conway boards. Is there anyone else on a Conway board or committee? Yes, Beth? Yeah, we have um, Grace Larson here from the Conservation Commission. Okay, thanks also Grace. Also a citizen, but she's, I'm sure she's here representing the conservation. Okay, thank you. So that's who's here and um, so what I, that's who we are. So I'm gonna move that we start the, um, the first, start the hearing and somebody wanna second that motion. And then all in favor of the planning board say aye. Okay, we've opened the meeting. Is there anybody present from the media? Is there anyone who is, um, you know, of any media people here? If so, please identify yourselves. Not seeing anybody. Okay. Everybody is doing a brilliant and fabulous job at being muted. Y'all have learned the Zoom world well. And so being muted and reminding Dusty or anyone else who comes on the phone that star six is the way to mute and unmute when you're on the phone. Star nine is the way to raise your hand on the phone. Um, and um, so we're gonna take questions and comments after we're gonna have, uh, you know, I'll explain what we're, you know, how we're going through um, with, uh, you know, the plan, you know, the agenda as we go, and there's going to be times for questions and comments, and I'll explain the process of how we'll do questions and comments um, as we go, but just know that there will be an opportunity, um, and ask you to hold them. There's going to be some presentations. We ask you to hold the questions and comments till I say, okay, now we want questions and comments on this topic, and, and there'll be an order in how we do that. Um, so, I think that the other thing that I, everybody please note in the chat, um, does everybody know how to open up the chat and see what's the chat? Does anybody need help with that? If you don't know how to do that, please look at the bottom of your screen. There's a button that says chat, click on that. It opens up a panel on the right. And I just put in information, a, a link to our attendance sheet. We need everyone's name and where they live as part of our official record of this meeting. So please fill that out if you if you could. Um, and so Beth, um, I'm gonna put up a screen of the agreements and you're gonna go, you're gonna do that. Is that right? We ready for that? Yes. Okay, so um, well, let me actually find that proper place for that because you know how it is when you're on Zoom and you have to have the right thing ready to go. Yes. Here we go. Okay, thank so, you, Mary. Here we go. So we're going to go over briefly our public hearing agreements. Um, we are agreeing to be respectful. We are agreeing that this is a civil discourse. We are gonna refrain from hostility or insults, name calling and sarcasm. Everyone will have the opportunity to ask questions and comment. Please keep your comments relatively brief to allow others a chance. And again, allow others a chance before, if you've spoken once, please allow other people to speak before you speak again. So the way that this works is following a presentation, we take questions and comments first from planning board members. 
then from other Conway official, committee officials and members, then Conway residents, then residents of other towns. That's how that goes. Mary, so, can you scroll down a little? Hmm? I was asking. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it for our, for our agreements for this public meeting. Um, there are some uh, state laws related to public meetings about, about discourse and, and uh, commentary, which allows the chair of any public meeting to warn people uh, if they're stepping outside of the bounds, what is allowable and remove them from the meeting if they do continue to, to uh, uh, step over those bounds, which basically are anything that is a personal attack. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to, I'm going to say that I'm sure we can all handle this public hearing um, thinking well of each other. That's what I'm going to ask everyone to do. Let's all think well of each other here. Thanks. And I think that's it for me for now. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, Beth. Um, yeah. So, so as any public hearing, these public hearings are an opportunity for us to present information about some proposed bylaw revisions that are being considered and to get input on those proposed changes. Um, and tonight we're holding two public hearings about three proposed bylaw changes. So the, the first public hearing, and we're splitting them up because of topics and types of bylaw. The first public hearing is to amend article six of our bylaws and make administrative change to language. And I'll ex we'll explain what that is. The second public hearing is to amend two bylaw articles. There is about two articles. One is um, amend two revisions. One is to article two, the something called the solar electric overlay district, which is um, something that we have in our bylaw that we'll explain more about. And the other is to amend the, the article nine, which is the large scale solar facilities bylaws. Um, and the process for changing bylaws, just a reminder about how process, changing bylaws works. The, there's public hearings like this to collect input on the draft of revised bylaws. At the April 1st meeting of the planning board, we will finalize a draft of revised bylaws of the article two and article nine, the two solar related ones. I'm not sure Bob or Phil how, what happens with the article six and whether that's something we do or you do, but Anyway, and then so the April 1st planning board meeting, that's when we're going to find, we're going to like get a bunch of input now, get input between now and then. And on April 1st, we'll finalize the draft of the revised bylaw, get it into the, um, that will be, um, and th then it will go, that draft of the revised bylaw will be discussed and voted on as an article on the town meeting warrant. And town meeting is going to be held on Saturday, June 5th this year. Um, so that's the um, that's the plan for this evening. Are there any questions or clarification needed about any of that? Shall we leap right into the first one? We're leaping. Okay. So Beth is going to present about um, public hearing one, which is to amend Article Six, administrative changes to language. Okay. So this we hope uh, I'm going to move that we open this public hearing to amend article six. Everybody, Mary seconds, yeah. and we all say aye. Yeah. Um, this, this request came to us from the um, Board of Selectmen. And the reason that it came to us is because they don't wanna be called the Board of Selectmen. They want to be called the Select Board. So this seems fairly straightforward. The purpose of this amendment is to change the references to Selectmen in, the, in our bylaws to select board. So I'm hoping, I'm willing to take questions on this. And, um, but so we'll just give this a little. Right, so there's. Any, any questions or comments on this particular um, um, amend to amend article six, administrative change to language. So everywhere in our bylaws where it says, oh, Phil has something to so say. So Susan has a question, then Phil has a question. Oh, okay. So Beth, it it's it only appears twice. There are only yes. places where the word selectmen appear, and that would be changed to select board. It's not a huge change. Good. 
good good point thank you susan phil, phil. yeah just um there was some confusion about it we that we did decide it's select board one word we're continuing the futile war against unnecessary spaces so save the space okay yeah yes so we're we'll eliminate select the space select board one word and yeah. uh, yes any other comments or questions there's a comment in the chat from thad bennett who says disappointed about extra items as the notice says the meeting is about article nine the Fine. Load we're, we're, we'll be moving on to article nine very quickly especially if we can get this piece done With um, apologies apologies sad but this is this is what we're what we're doing tonight um so any other comments or questions about this art, amending Article 6, changing this language? Raise okay. your hand or, okay. Great. So, so um, I'm, I'm going to pres I'm going to close, I'm going to move to close this public hearing on this topic. Second. Everyone second it. And all in favor, yes. And Aye. So we're all in favor, aye. Great, so now I'm going to move that we open the second public hearing of this evening, which is the first section of it is to amend article two. And I'm going to turn this over to, oh wait. We so have to second. second, I'm seconded. And all in favor on our planning aye. board. Aye, 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 we're all here, great. Okay, and I'm going to ask Susan Fenton to take over this section of the whole thing. Thank you. Okay, so this, this is also fairly straightforward. Um, when the town became a green community, um, we designated four parcels as solar, as part of what's called the solar overlay district. And the solar overlay district then would include parcels by which uh, solar facilities could be um, uh, erected, could be installed as a matter of right. And we did this so that we could be part of the green communities initiative and the town received some compensation, I believe, as a result of this. And Joe or Beth, please feel free to jump in any place that I misstate some of this stuff. So um, uh, at this point now, we're part of a forest stewardship plan that we would like to be able to commit to. And one of the parcels in, that we would like to be able to have uh, as part of the forest stewardship plan is the Fournier par parcel, which is the part of the Conway State Forest that is basically behind the grammar school. It's not the state forest, it's town-owned land. I'm sorry, town-owned land, excuse me. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Um, it's town-owned land behind, basically behind the Fournier's property, behind the grammar school. And in order to be able to be part of the forest stewardship plan, we need to amend the bylaws and change the map, the solar overlay map. The solar overlay map is part of the bylaws. We need to amend the solar overlay map to remove the Fournier par parcel. Once we've amended the bylaws, we then will request the state to allow us to do so, and they will approve that. We've been, it's been indicated to us that that would be pretty much automatic once the town has voted in this change to the bylaws. So that is the first one of the two solar, um, the two solar uh, bylaw revisions that we're proposing tonight. And now we'll entertain questions and comments and concerns from anybody who's interested. Um, do we want to show a picture of the map? And oh, yes. Mary, Mary, would you screen share a picture of the map for us all? Thank okay. you. Very much. Yeah. Let me show you, show you the map to show you. And it's going to be a little challenging on Zoom. Um, Beth, I also want to ask you to look at your chat. Um, but um, I'm getting to the screen share. Okay. So this is going to be a little challenging to see, but can you see now a map looks like a topographic map of Conway? Yeah. People able to see that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to oh. zoom in just a little bit. And so if you look at and the scroll map, down a little. Big Mary, scroll down a red little. Red sort of rectangle. Yeah, scroll down. Yes, I will. But that. Yeah, that's good. That captures it. I think that's every, that's all of them. I think. Oop, no, go back up. Yeah, no, so, right, I'm gonna zoom in now that we're gonna zoom into the center of Conway and um, it's zooming in. So if about in the center of the screen right now, there's a red rectangle. There you go. 
And the things that have red and white stripes across them are the things in the solar overlay district. So it's the, um, the South River Park area just on along Shelburne Falls Road. There's a section of this, this is the Sinclair Waterworks over here off Delabar. There's a section across from the transfer station. Mm -hmm. on, and then what's being removed is a section where the grammar school is over here. There had been a section over here where the Fournier property was. If you can see my cursor right. up. Yep. So that's a flying cursor. So this would then be the map that Mary is showing you now, or was just showing you, would then be the uh, map of the solar overlay district in Conway. And that properties for which um, a solar array would be able to be put in as a matter of right. It would still have the site plan review process that we are outlining in the revised bylaws, but it would no longer require, it would not require a special permit as other site other solo overlays would if the revised bylaws are passed. Um, okay. Are there any questions about this change? To the it seems Alice has her physical, her literal hand up. <laughs> Alice? Is that, is actually, that correct, wait, Alice? Actually, I just... Alice, we, we, have, we have an order. Yeah, we have okay, to, we I have just to wanna, do the board on, first, right? Hold on a second. I just want to, there's some chat going on in the chat that I want to just clarify before we go any further, which um, uh, somebody who is on another planning board here um, pointed out that he thinks that there are requirements for having um, roll call votes during remote meetings. And I'm not really clear. Um, and that it sounds like, um, uh, that the votes must be taken by roll call. So uh, I wonder whether we need to go back and sort of interrupt for a moment. I apologize to everybody. This is, um, uh, yeah, that whether we can re-vote, re, shall we, shall we, uh, how about this? Uh, how about this to, to move things forward? I would propose this. I would propose that we continue with this section. We'll do a roll call vote um, to close this hearing when it's time to he close this hearing. I don't know, except do we need to, we need to do and, a roll call vote to open it. Should we need to start over and do a roll no. call vote? So, hey, Mary. So what I think is we are in this current meeting and I think we should finish this meeting and then reopen the first one and do a roll call vote. That way we're not delaying the meat of the meeting any longer. Right. And I think there isn't a problem with us reopening the meeting to take the roll call vote. Right. And but do we need to re shall we right now? Do we need to reopen this section of this this public hearing um, for purposes of having a roll call vote to open it? OK, so um, Bob Armstrong says our interpretation is that if the vote is unanimous, you show hands. And if unanimous, you say new, unanimous. Otherwise, it's a roll call. All right, well, we had okay. unanimous to start with. Okay. okay. Phil is heartily that. agreeing. Okay, we, thank you, Bob. Thank you, and Phil nodding. I like those nods. And it's more than a nod. <laughs> thank you for everybody bringing that up. So if there's ever, if there's a question of not being unanimous, we'll do roll call. But I just wanted to clarify that and apologize to everybody who's here for not having that more clear. Zoom, you know, brings its various challenges. So anyway, we're back to Susan presented about the about the map. We're taking the Fournier property off this overlay district. And so first we wanna hear, are there any planning board questions or comments? Anyone from the planning board questions or comments? Hearing none. Okay, are there any select board or other committee, Conway committees, Phil. Phil Just real quickly, help. so this is necessary in order for the town's forest to participate in the carbon credit market for which we currently are about, or starting our carbon credit survey. Um, so that's that was really the prime motor, motivation for this. And I would just like, to, the, the author of this um, did a really good job. I'm not sure who that is, but this was well-crafted and well done, so. Okay. So thank you. So thank you. Are there other comments from anyone on the any 
the select board or other boards or committees? Comments or questions from um, any Conway residents? Either raise your hand physically or raise your hand in the chat in the by using the little participants thing or Dusty using star nine. Marble. Alice. Hand. Alice. You're muted, Alice. Lower right, nor left, lower left. Yeah, there you go. Good now job. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I don't want to take a lot of time on this because I think it's important to get to um, Article 9, but I'm just curious to know why those other three properties are considered in the overlay district and therefore would be exempt from the full process should solar want to be established there. So those are, town. this was part of the green, being, um, being part of the green communities, um, being designated a green community, we had to, we had to create a district that included sites where they could be by right. All of these are town owned properties. Um, and this was decided by, um, I guess it was probably the select board back um, when Conway became a green community. So- I believe it was also voted in at a town meeting. Probably, yes. Yes, it yeah. would have been voted- It had to be. Voted at a town meeting. So okay. that's the history of that and, and as, Phil mentioned, you know, the, the Fournier property is now has a whole forestry management plan and carbon credit and all kinds of things. And that's why it is being removed. So well, we're proposing that it be removed. And for the other three parcels, does that mean that the town is considering establishing solar projects on those parcels? No, it means that the, the town has, the town is um, not doing anything about establishing solar you know, solar facilities, they are pieces of property that if the town decided they wanted to, or a developer wanted to do it, they could do those by right there. Subject to a site plan review. Right, subject to site plan review, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions from people who are living in Conway? Please um, wave your hand about or raise your hand. How about people from other communities who are not Conway? It's Jenny Golay, I see. I see Jenny Golay as the name on the screen. And actually, if I, I, would, um, I would ask, if I didn't do this initially, I'm sorry. Please, when you make a comment or question, especially for the first time, please identify yourself and where you live. Hi, Jeff Golay, 2300 Main Poland Road. I'm just curious if the town uh, did want to develop solar on those parcels, who would make that decision? Would that be subject to a town meeting vote or is it just, um, you know, who, who has the power to decide that for the town? I'm just curious. I would assume if the town was going to do something of that size and scope, it would be a town meeting vote. And it would be something the planning board, I mean, this the select board, presumably it would be something the select board would bring to a town meeting. Joe. Joe. Um, I don't, Mary, I don't think that's correct. Okay. When we accepted the Green Community Act, we agreed to have parcels where solar could go in by right. So all the, in order to develop those parcels, it would take a um, public hearing and a site plan review and then a decision by the planning board. Okay. I'm wrong, I apologize. Okay. 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 Other questions or comments? Um, so is shall, are we done with this, this part of this? Um, this I part? believe so, I mean- and We can move to article nine? The meeting is still open. So if, if people had further comments or questions as Bob. Uh, the meeting goes on, I see Bob Armstrong waving his hand. Go for it, Bob. Uh, well, so I, I never want to say anything different than Joe, but, <laughs> um, but if the town decided to do anything like this, it would clearly require borrowing money and we would have to go before the, the town meeting. You know, I mean, the, the town, 
if if a developer came to us and said they wanted to do it, they could do it by right. If the town was going to do it, it would be a very different thing, and 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 it would definitely go before town meeting. Uh, and Joe, I mean, I don't know whether you would argue with me, but but I believe we would we would borrow money and we would you know, it, you know, go before the town. So, uh, just I mean, I I don't want people to think that the select board is going to go off and say we want to build solar and somehow we would do it on one of our town parcels without consulting the town, which we would not do. As far as the location of the parcel is, as far as the location of the solar is concerned, though, those areas that are marked on the map would be the sites upon which the town could build something like that were it to decide that it wanted to invest in solar on those areas. To become a green community, as you say, you have to um, specify some parcels that can be developed by right. And in exchange, the town got some money that it could spend on green projects. And then you have to report back to the state how you spent that money. They verify that you actually did the work you said. We did a lot of insulating in town hall. I think we also put new, you know, we improved the, the insulation in the town garage, projects like that. Thank you, Bob. Okay, so enough on enough on the Article Two revision. On ready to go to Article Nine. Sure. Okay. Um, so um, this is um, so Susan, you get to do this, and Susan, would you like me to put the chart up now as a visual? You can put the chart up, and then we'll have the chart up briefly. But the chart doesn't really cover all of the issues that we're going to be talking about. So it's basically just a broad brush review of the changes that we are proposing for Article 9. Let me okay. let me first, uh, go ahead, put the chart up, Mary. Okay, so we're putting the chart up. And what I'm going to do is also put a link to the full 13 pages or whatever it is. Right. I'll put a link to that in the in the chat. So if you want to be reading along in the real fine details, that's right. And, that. and I recommend that you might consider doing that is link to it on a separate, uh, either uh, minimize your Zoom and link to it there or because Mary's only gonna be able to show a portion of it at a time and you might wanna be flipping back and forth and looking at different things. So, um, so this is basically a, a brief chart showing the, um, the proposed changes, what, what the current condition is and what the proposed condition is. Um, let me also mention that in order to have these changes be made to the bylaws, um, it would require a two thirds vote of the town meeting um, and approval by the attorney general's office. So this is just because we might decide that we like these changes tonight doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go through. The town meeting has to vote on it and then two thirds of the town meeting has to vote for it. It's just like we did when we made the marijuana, tried, tried to make changes to marijuana. And also the, um, the statute says that uh, solar bylaws cannot excessively regulate um, solar uh, development. So. All of that is subject to review by the AG's office and reviewing um, the language to make sure it doesn't excessively regulate. However, I'll tell you that the changes that we're proposing here are changes that we have seen in either other uh, town bylaws or in um, uh, model solar bylaws that were prepared by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So we feel that the language that we've proposed here is probably going to be okay, but there are no guarantees. This attorney general could strike any one of the things that we're doing and decide it was too, uh, too extreme. Um, the rest of the bylaws would remain the same should any of those be stricken by the AG's office, but, um, but we, we don't have the final say this evening. Just wanted to let you know. The other thing that can also happen is that people who wanted to make additional changes to these proposed bylaws could propose those amendments at town meeting, just as was done um, when we were trying to revise the marijuana bylaws. People can make proposed uh, revisions uh, at town meeting. So it's not a done deal to, as of tonight. This is just a, a framework for the changes that we wanna make. So well, and, also, and also wanna point out that there's comments tonight and then we're gonna be accepting more comments through like March 30th at planningboardoftownofconway.com, so. Right. Sorry, I just had to eliminate some extra noise in my household. Uh, okay. okay, so um, a couple of things to note. Um, these bylaws do not change the ability of the homeowner to put residential um, or small commercial solar up to 25 kilowatts direct current as of right with the building permit. So 
If you wanted to put um, a bunch of solar onto your roof, yes. If you wanted to put a bunch of solar onto your roof um, that would uh, help your household have solar electricity, that is probably gonna be just fine as long as it's not greater than 25 kilowatts. It also doesn't change the ability of small commercial or large homeowner array up to 250 kilowatts or approximately a, um, an acre and a quarter of panel coverage. And that is also as of right. Um, the difference there is that it would be as of right, but it would also require a site plan review, which is very customary and which is what our current bylaws basically um, currently provide. What we are doing here is try to have more control of what we are calling large scale solar facilities. These are facilities that are over 250 kilowatts. This is such as the Nexamp facility on Main Poland Road. Those facilities would now require both a special permit and site plan review. And we've added a number of conditions to the special permit. And, and we feel that we have tried to learn from some of the experiences that we've had with the Nexam facility in a way to um, minimize the impact on um, abutters and on the town in general um, of solar while still allowing solar to occur. So the current condition allows setbacks of 50 feet from property lines. And this is talking about setbacks from the property line to the solar array, which is the area of the parcel where the solar um, panels are located. It's called the solar array. Current condition is 50 feet. The setbacks would be 100 feet from the property line. Um, and again, as I said, there'd be no change to the, um, to the commercial, to residential and commercial ground mounted um, solar arrays up to 25 kilowatts. No real change to the 25 to 250 kilowatts. Um, we've also added the uh, acre and a quarter of panel coverage to that um, description to be sure that it's clear because sometimes the, um, the, uh, the panels could become more efficient and they actually could deliver more kilowatts than we were restricting, but we're basically trying to restrict it to an acre and a quarter of panel coverage. And then that would also be by right, but with a site plan review. Then the major change occurs in a parcel that um, is either is somewhere between uh, an acre and a quarter and 20 acres, um, 250 kilowatts to 5,000 kilowatts. And this would now require a, um, a special permit process and a, um, and a site plan review. So that is the major change to the bylaw. The uh, Perimeter of the panel array um, currently is required to be 50 feet from public ways and abutting properties with 30 feet of vegetation. Our proposed change would um, create uh, 100 feet from public ways and abutting dwellings with 30 feet of ve ve vegetation and also would require a setback from other large scale solar facilities of a mile measured in a straight line from one array to the other array. And that's to keep from keep a, a neighborhood from becoming um, uh, overly uh, taken over with um, large scale solar facilities. I don't know if any of you are familiar with what's happening in Shutesbury, but um, that's basically to try to minimize the possibility that something like that would be a problem for us. The uh, screening change currently it requires a six foot fencing with evergreen plantings is required. Uh, our screening change is that it would be six feet industrial grade opaque fencing with evergreen plantings as required. Um, we are also restricting slopes. Um, in the current bylaws, there is no restriction on what kind of a slope uh, can be the site of a solar array. Here we are going to ask that slopes of greater than 15% over 50 horizontal feet are not going to be permitted unless um, there are specific site site-specific parameters, which might allow us to bring it up to 18% of a grade, but that, that would be the total limit. As far as access is concerned, right now we just allow existing driveway regulations, but we believe that it's more important to have existing driveway regulations, but also for emergency vehicles. Um, we're requiring a stormwater management plan that was not um, originally part of the um, site plan review for the larger facilities. Now we are going to be requiring it. This is something that would be paid by the applicant. We're also going to be requiring, um, we may be requiring um, construction site monitoring. This is something within the discretion of the planning board. It probably would be something that we would be requiring. It seems that it would be a good idea. But again, this is also something that would be paid by the applicant. 
As far as line of sight visibility, um, what we are trying to do is to vis minimize to the maximum extent possible visibility from public roads and adjacent neighboring dwellings. Again, the problem we have here, we can't say it's not possible to have it be seen because we believe that the attorney general would strike that as an unreasonable regulation. However, we are definitely going to be looking at the visibility of the array from public roads and adjacent dwellings to be sure that it can be minimized as much as possible. Um, we have put in, um, there is currently no incentive for dual use. This is something called agrovoltaics. If any of you have been following the, um, uh, the uh, proposed solar array in Northfield, that's where the Latoile family is putting in a solar array that is going to be tall enough so that sheep can graze underneath the array. And that might mean that the array would need to be over 12 feet tall, but that would be the only circumstance that where we would allow an array to be over 12 foot tall would be if it was for dual use or agrovoltaics. Oh, I just said that, look at that. Okay, um, we have put in a limitation on deforestation, clearing of prime forest land, and we actually have a definition of prime forest land in the, in the proposed bylaws. Um, anything greater than 10 acres is not going to be permitted for purposes of installing a solar array. Um, actually, there's currently a cost disincentive by the Massachusetts SMART. I, Joe will be able to tell us what SMART stands for. I keep forgetting. But it's a program that Massachusetts has that is in, in, um, designed to keep um, forested areas as forest because they provide a carbon capture that um, sometimes can uh, be even better than putting up a solar array. So in terms of, um, of a green, uh, of, of, a, of an effort to have a green community, um, clearing forest land to put in a solar array doesn't necessarily achieve um, your purposes. So that's the broad scale um, view of the proposed, I, don't, I think that's the last page, right, Mary? Yeah. So that was page. it, yes. And I realized that when I'm, when I'm screen sharing, I can't see the chat or I can't see other things. And so I apologize. I don't know if I miss, missed anything, but. No, I don't think yes. so. Yeah, so that's the chart. And then I, and I will also put in the link. I will put in a link to the full um, bylaw, um, the revisions, the full, the detailed bylaw revisions into the chat. Um, okay. And, Thanks. Um, but. Um, this is a link to the town website that has the current bylaw that it's it's a marked up thing where like if you if you go look at this if you go look at this document what you'll see is you know like text and some of it is struck out and some of it is in italics strike out right. it, strike right. out means that you're removing something italics means you're adding something so this gives right. you that was the summary in chart form but the, the thing I just linked to in the chat shows you the actual text with the changes. Right, and, and what I have here is a hard copy. Remember hard copies, guys? <laughs> back, back in the ancient days when you printed things out, I have a hard copy of the bylaw proposed revisions with me here, and this is what I'm going to use to take notes if I have comments or concerns or questions from People, as we go through the bylaws, I'm happy to take notes, and then the planning board will be meeting again in um, on April. No, not April first. April first, right? Planning board will meet again on April first and decide if there are other changes or revisions we need to make to what we've proposed so far, and then we'll send that to the town for the town warrant. So that's the process right now. Any questions about the process at all? So. Um so um, I'm, there's a question from Jocelyn, but before I, we get a question for Jocelyn, um, what, what we're gonna do, so we're, we're gonna move to questions of content, not a process. So here's the, here's the way the questions and comments are gonna go. We're gonna um, first ask for comments and questions from the planning board. Then we're gonna ask for questions and comments from members of Conway committees or boards. Then we'll go to, um, folks from um, who are from Conway and then folks from outside of Conway. Um, and the way to get recognized when it's, you know, you're in the category for you is to either wave your hand about or use the little um, raise hand feature. Um, but first, so first it's, 
Um, comments or questions from planning board members? Any comments or questions about Article 9, proposed revisions to Article 9? Well, Mary, are we going to, let me just ask a, a procedural question because I'm not sure I, I, I was clear on this. We've shown the chart. Are we going to go through Article 9 page by page during this meeting and talk about the changes and the definitions and such? You're welcome to do that, right? We could, we could you can go, you can do that if you want. Well, um, I, I, I think that that, I think that might be a good idea. I hate. I defer. I defer to you. I'm. I'm in the sort of uh, facilitate role and not the. Um, I hear you. Um, so so. But this is. I. But this is my. I'm new at this, right? So don't don't necessarily go by I'm, me. Beth and I'm seeing nods from Beth. What what I would say is, how about if we go through sort of section by section? Yes, that's and, a good idea. Go through section by section, and we'll inst and we will and I think after each section, we'll say, okay, are there questions, comments on that section? Then we go to the next section. Yes, that I think that's a good idea. Does yeah. that sound reasonable? Because yeah. otherwise trying to hold on to your co comments or questions could be challenging. Right, um, and I have one more question, Mary, which is right now it's already quarter of eight and yeah. this meeting is supposed to go until nine. Correct. And what happens at nine o'clock if we're not done? Do we just keep going? Well, one of the things that I would think is that the plan, the public hearing is one way that we take comments and uh, okay. comments and questions. And okay. people are welcome to email us. Um, whether you're here tonight or not, you're welcome to email us comments and questions um, between now and March 30th. And then we will be spending time at our April 1st meeting doing revisions and, and doing whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I had a comment, there's a comment from Thad about uh, whether or not we'd be going to go through the chart. And may I answer that, Mary? Sure. Um, so no, we're not going to be going through the chart. We're going to go through the 13 page document. That includes the things that are in the chart. It's the chart is just a broad summary of the changes that we're making, but the specifics are in the 13 page document. So we'll be marching through that as quickly and efficiently as possible and um, hopefully we'll have some basic agreement. Okay, so I'm gonna, I am going to um, put the, um, I'm gonna put the chart up. Right. I mean, not, not the chart. No, not the chart. I'm gonna the put amendment. the 13 page document up. Okay. And um, if somebody sees something or has some reason that they need to communicate with me, talk to me because I will not be able to see the chat while I'm doing it. All right, that. so people will have to say, say their name if they want to be uh, recognized to be to, to talk okay right i mean this is well i will i will be right they will somebody tell me who needs to be recognized i will okay or if there's somebody else on the planning board who wants to share screen then i can yeah it would that's be that's okay we're, we're good so um all right so uh basically most of the changes in the purpose section so mary i'm wondering if i should share the screen although i don't think i have this on my system so i'm not sure i can share um, to be able to scroll down. Click, click the link. I'm sorry. I'm, I can scroll down. Okay. Oh, apologies. Oops. Apologies. I'm, I'm taking it out of it so we can look at each other. If you look at the chat, I put the link. Anybody who wants to follow along, I put the link to the um, PDF that's on the town website. That's what I just was showing you. And Susan, you could click on that link. You would see it and you could share All right. it. And then, I'll move, and then I'll move through it. So let me go to the link. That would be better, and then I can monitor. Yeah, I can got, it. got it. All right, and then I go back to Zoom and screen share. Uh, uh, am I screen sharing that now, Mary? Can you see that? Nope. So if you, I know I have to go into the meeting and and share my screen. Correct, and you have it. I know how to do this. I just taught my granddaughter. <laughs> I just had uh, a world history session with my granddaughter this afternoon. I'm psyched about this. Okay. So everybody, I'm assuming, can see this screen now. Good job. Okay. So um, this is now the solar facilities bylaw. I think that's pretty obvious as to why it needs to be labeled that way. Section 9 applies to all of solar facilities. So basically, the purpose is no longer to promote the creation of new large-scale ground-mounted solar photovoltaic, I can say this, photovoltaic installations, 
but simply to provide for the construction and operation of those facilities. So the changes here are meant to make sure that it's clear that these are only applying, that these apply to all possible uh, solar arrays. Um, we're moving right through the definitions. Many of these are exactly the same. In some cases, it's just tidying up the language a little bit. Um, we get down to here and we are starting to define the various categories of solar facilities. An intermediate scale solar facility is one that is greater than 25 watts, but less than 250 watts in capacity. A residential small commercial um, facility is any roof mounted installation on an existing structure. Ground mounted installation less than or equal to 25 watts. So this is all just making it a little more clear as to what the various parts of the um, various types of array are possible. Susan? Yes. Um, when you're talking and typing, we are hearing a lot of typing sounds. Okay, I'll be, you I'll be, thank you for that. So thank you for that. Gentle, okay. gentle touching of the gentle Got it. touch. Got it. Got it. And maybe not touching while I'm typing, well, not talking while I'm touching. Okay. Here again is a definition of the large scale ground mounted solar photo voltaic installation, just a definition. Again, um, a definition of on-site, so those things <laughs> on-site. Um, definition of prime forest land. Um, this is something that we refer to later in the, in the bylaws. So it's here as, a, as for, for definition purposes. We can come back to that later when we get to that section of the bylaws, if that's okay with everybody. The solar overlay district, as we just discussed, we are proposing to amend the solar overlay district map um, and change it to uh, remove the Fournier property. And that's what this particular change does. Solar photovoltaic array is defined in the next definition. Special permit granting authority appeared from time to time in the original bylaws. We made sure that that was clear that that's the planning board and then no other changes. So that's the beginning section of the bylaws. Are there any comments or questions related to that beginning section? First, anything from the planning board or other planning board members, any questions or comments? Okay. Um, Joe? There's a, there was a question in the chat about the zoning enforcement authority. Currently that service is provided through the county, through the uh, inspection services department. Thanks, Joe. Um, that's helpful. Okay, any, any questions or comments from other town board or committee members? Uh, wave your hand about or just unmute yourself. And Jocelyn, speak. I have a question on the Yes. So my question about Jocelyn, the will you please will you please um, say your name and what board you're with sure. and where you live? Sure, Jocelyn Forbush, twenty five twenty eight Main Poland Road. Question about um, the forest soils. So prime forest soils, which I haven't been able to find the map of in our open space plan or elsewhere for Conway. The question is whether or not there's an understanding of the ramification of this very actually quite focused and minor, I would say proportion of probably Conway's forest land designation for what we care about is basically how I interpret this. So how did we arrive here aside from the financial constraints that I understand in Susan's good outline as having sort of smart reg positivity? Why do, why do we like positive prime forest land soils because versus a broader definition for clear cuts in particular. Yeah, so the purpose of having prime forest land, and this appears later in the bylaws, but the purpose for having this definition here, and this is a definition that we got from the USDA. And if there are better definitions that uh, you think as in your capacity as with the trustees, et cetera, might have um, more applicability, we certainly would be interested in considering those. But the idea here was to try to, um, keep uh, the carbon capture of good forest land um, and restrict the ability of people to clear cut to um, uh, 
to create a, a solar array. So it's, it's, you'll see later, but I'd be happy to talk with your further planning board, be happy to talk with you further about if you think there's a better definition that would do a better job of, of um, achieving our goals. Uh, yeah, I'd love to have that conversation. This is about it. I mean, prime forest land is a really a production focused forest production, right? How fast and well can you grow trees? Which is a different conversation from our carbon sequestration. Anyways, happy to either move this to the bottom of the list where it is on your outline or offline, but would love to discuss. Okay, that. let's let's do either one of those. But um, but thanks for raising that, and I've made a note. Are there other people from Conway with? Barb Armstrong has his hand up, Mary. Bob, yes. Hi, Mary. So so. I'm not sure whether, again, you will say we should bring this up later, but I had a similar question about the definition of prime forest land. And really what I'm wondering is, would this include um, the Newman's property, given that it had been logged, and then, then it was clear cut for a forest, would that logging make it no longer prime forest land? So Bob, I don't know because I don't know anything about the Newman's forest. I don't know anything about their soil and what their, what their forest looked like before um, the solar array was put in. This was something that we found in some other language from some other bylaws and it seemed to be a good idea. So that's where we are on this. I, I, I completely agree. I, I just, I'm just wondering, you, you know, I mean, my hope is that we will, we will no longer have these questions like came up continuously in the next AM project and 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 you know the definition of prime forest land and then whether it applies in a particular case um, seems like it 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 ought to be settled in the way we write these 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 bylaw changes and i agree with you and we'll be working on that to be sure that it's great it's clear as we possibly can make it given our knowledge base which is <laughs> in some cases not that clear and right, so this is this is an ex this is a prime example, not to use prime again, but prime example of something that if you have information or comments that could be useful for the board as we take these issues into consideration, if you email those to planningboardatanaconway.com before March 30th, we'll be able to take those into account. If you and, email and them to us after April 1st, we won't be able to. So, so thank, thank you for those thank you for those thoughts and that's our goal Bob is to make sure that it's as clear as it possibly can be. Okay. So and so, so, and Jenny in the in the chat um, so so I really want to be clear that what we're talking about um, what we're talking about is is moving forward it's no impact no like nothing we're talking about now is has an impact on the current project. And so if they're, um, you know, really what we're thinking about is what is it going forward we want to do? And Michael DeCiara from the um, Shrewsbury Planning Board said something about there's a land use section in the smart regs about forest protection. And perhaps we should look at that. And Michael, if you wanted to send that to us at planningboardoftownofconway.com, we would be, we'd appreciate that. So that's a helpful, this or is even a link here. Or put a link here, that'd be great too. Yeah, um, that would be, um, this is Thank helpful you. information. But Very helpful. Now, are there anything more about this first section that Susan, anybody from outside of Conway or anyone else who hasn't spoken, um, who would like to speak about this first section that we talked about, that Susan talked about? And again, definition section. So it's a section that is basically really only has import as we get through the rest of the, of the, the. Uh, Thad, I see Thad. Oh, Thad. Uh, so I'm Thad Bennett, uh, 1165 Shelburne Falls Road in Conway. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a big picture guy. So um, the, the, the phrase that's gotten me is uh, in very, the very first section on purpose, you took out the word promote the creation of. And so what, what I'm curious about is um, re really our purpose here. We're, are you creating these new bylaws so that we're better good neighbors, which seems to be part of what happened with this array you were talking about, about Poland on Poland Road? 
or are you creating these bylaws to be more restrictive so those of us who are totally supportive of solar power, however we can do it, uh, I don't know if I should look at this as you're getting in the way of supporting solar power and making neighbors more important than solar power, or are you trying to make sure we're better good neighbors and promoting solar power, but you took out the word promote. Right. So I'm, I'm well, trying let me to figure explain. out where's the planning board landing? Sure, let me explain our thoughts on this then. So as the planning board, we, tra we, we travel a very delicate line. We, we, we walk a very delicate line because we have two obligations. One of which is to, as you're, as you're very uh, clearly noting, one of which is our personal commitments to a green community and um, solar installations wherever possible and, and, uh, and practicable in the, in the town of Conway. But the other concern that we have as members of the planning board is to be sure that we represent the concerns and the interests of the citizens. And so we're trying to, um, to be sure that we do both here. We have set up systems. Uh, we haven't, as, as Mary has said, this has no effect on the current NEXAMP facility. And frankly, I'm not sure we, could have, we would be able to prevent the NEXAMP or want to prevent the NEXAMP facility from being constructed um, if it were to be coming in after the, these bylaws were, were passed. But what it does do is it does give us more control over the construction in such a way as to minimize the impact on any abutting neighbors. Um, it doesn't say that you can't put a, a solar installation of, of large scale in Conway. It just says, if you're gonna do that, we want you to be watching out for these specific things. And those are things that we will be covering later in the, um, in the bylaw amendments. I hope that answers your question. And I would also say, I would also say that um, we, that the our that this that we had an information session about this. We've taken input about this. We've had discussions about this, and there was and the word promote um, and large scale solar was of concern to some people who spoke up. So you're now you know so. That's, you know, that, but the, so basically what this does is it provides ways to do it within parameters that address the bal balancing the different concerns. It doesn't, it doesn't restrict, it doesn't make it not possible to do large scale solar. It says if you're going to, you know, large scale solar has a place, but we want to do it in with attention to these details. So I, I'm totally supportive of that fine line you're trying to walk. I, I guess I want to make sure that if five citizens say, I'm worried about the word promote, and thus you take it out, I want you to know that there's at least one citizen that is saying, I think we should do everything possible to promote solar power uh, in the town of Crown, uh, Conway and be at the forefront of being as green as possible. So if, Thanks. if there's a citizen that's concerned about promote because of their property line, I understand there's a fine line to walk. I'm in favor of promote. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for that. Sharing. And I think it'd be a great time, unless there are other comments, I think it'd be a great time to move on to the next section since it's eight <laughs> o'clock, we have another hour. Um, okay. Let's move forward, okay? All right, this is, this is new section 9.1, which basically deals with general requirements for all solar power generation installations. So this covers, this, cop, um, this particular section covers all of them, whether it's your house, whether it's your small scale commercial, or whether it's your large scale. So we've kind of reorganized this bylaw to make it a little more logical as you move through it. We hope that this, that's what it achieves. Um, we wanna make sure that all, um, all solar uh, photovoltaic, if I can, I don't know why I stumble over that, um, meet the wetland buffer and river protection standards. This is required under law. It is actually redundant because this already appears elsewhere in our bylaws, but we thought it was important because we care a lot about the wetland buffer and river protection standards. We wanna be sure that they are front and center in this, um, in this part of the bylaw. Um, we are requiring a building permit and a building, and, and a building inspection. And we're talking about fees. So those apply to everything. Then we get down to what applies to which, okay? So the ones that are as of right are the ones that are roof or ground mounted less than 25 kilowatts. And that's exactly as it is now. There is no change to that. It's just the reason it's in italics here 
is because it has been moved and redefined in a, in a separate uh, place so that this is all a little more clear and easy for people to follow when they're going through these bylaws. So the first is as of right with a building permit, that's your residential small commercial, then as of right with a site plan review, which is any ground mounted installation greater than 25 kilowatts over an existing parking lot, pedestrian walkway or other paved area, that's as of right, all we need is, is a site plan review. Any other ground mounted or roof mounted installation greater than 25 kilowatts, up to one and a quarter acres of panels, but less than 250, or any solar installation located in the solar overlay district. And since we've covered that in the previous uh, discussion about amendments, I think we're probably all clear on that. It's required by the Green Community Act. So that's as of right with a site plan review. And then here is what requires a special permit, which is any soto solar photovoltaic installation, 250 kilowatts or above, that isn't included in one or two. Those require a special permit in all zoning districts from the special permit granting authority, which is the planning board. It's also described site plan requirements are required, required and there's also um, a section 9.3, which applies to these larger um, installations. Then we have what's not permitted. No commercial solar photovoltaic installation is permitted in anything that is previously undisturbed, 20, greater than 20 acres of previously undisturbed land in solar array. Any solar photovoltaic installation requiring forest clearing greater than 10 acres of prime forested land. And again, Jocelyn, um, your comment about whether or not there's a better way to to deal with uh, the concerns we have about carbon capture, duly noted, and let's work on some better language to make sure that our goal here, this again, we took from another bylaw that appeared to be um, uh, doing, trying to address the same issues that we were trying to address. And then again, we also have the um, slopes greater of greater than 15% um, over 50 horizontal feet, unless there's um, some site specific parameters that would uh, permit that. And, um, and make it possible. Then there's this little D thing that says, if any provision of this bylaw is held invalid by a court, the remainder of the bylaw shall not be affected thereby. And that's basically saying, if any of these don't pass muster, it doesn't mean that the entire bylaw goes out the, out the window. So now we'll take comments and questions from planning board members on this second section that we've covered here. The uh, definitions and um, uh, of the of the three general areas that we're covering here. I'm gonna skip through this part and go right to here, the yeah. specific requirements. Yes. So anybody planning board or, or planning board members, questions, comments? Okay, other Conway board, select board or other Conway committee members? It's Michelle. Bob three. Armstrong. Oh, okay, Michelle and, and then Bob. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Oops. Please. Oh, Michelle. you want me first? Sorry. Um, so on on the section about wetlands. Michelle, please identify yourself and what board Michelle, or committee sorry. you're on. Michelle okay. Turry, Open Space Committee, Shelburne Falls Road, I live on. Um, on the part about wetlands, uh, I'm glad you put in any additional local wetlands protection bylaws in addition to the state ones. Um, I attended the solar um, and forest um, seminar that, or webinar that was done last week and they talked a lot about how many towns have additional local wetland bylaws. So it's really important to include that and to consider using it. I know um, so far, we don't have any, but I just wanted to bring that up. So they're there in case we end up developing them. Yes, that's okay. excellent. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And then Bob Armstrong, uh, if you could go to the section on what's not allowed, yeah, was the very last one you yep. talked about. Got it. So I'm ju I'm just wondering if you can give some examples here. One says nothing bigger than twenty acres, and the other says no forest clearing greater than 10 acres. So uh, might I have cleared land? Uh, and then if I cleared 
10 more, it would be bigger than 20 and that wouldn't be allowed. Uh, I, I, you know, I just, I'm not sure yeah. how to put these together. Yeah. Um, so this is our best effort to try to create some parameters, Bob. Um, 20 acres of previously undisturbed land, basically anything bigger than 20 acres is, is just not going to be permitted in Conway unless the town votes set down. Um, if you're trying to clear land um, and it's prime forested land as that definition may evolve, you can't clear more than 10 acres and put a, a solar array there. So, you know, I, I this, these are, are, are perhaps, uh, these are definitions that require some interpretation. Um, and if you have better language that would help us get there, that'd be great. I thought I kind of understood what they meant, but maybe I don't. Yeah, so I'm not seeing them as additive. I'm not saying you can have a 20 acres of previously undisturbed and then you can clear 10 acres of forest and have a 30 acre site. I'm no. saying that the max is 20 acres and of that 20 acres, it can be a max of 10 acres of clearing 10 acres of prime forested land. So you could have, right. you could have, for example, a open field and a, um, uh, you know, an open field and a, um, and a forest and, you know, it could be straddling it, but the, the, the major, the total footprint is 20 acres. Right. And the 10 acres of clear. Okay, great. That's, That's the way I read that. Okay. That's the way I read it as well. Okay, great. Does undisturbed land mean forest land only? Or is this fields that have not, what does that mean? Previously undisturbed. undisturbed. Land. Is it paved, like, what is it? What qualifies? Jocelyn, yeah. Jocelyn, so um, please wait to get it. Uh, sure. Ask, sorry, ask, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We're sorry, we're being clumsy, but please wait to ask to, to, to be acknowledged and it's a little challenging because of having a screen share to be able to see everybody. So actually I would ask people, if you want to be recognized, it would either help, it would really help to hold, put your hand up in the, um, you know, put, put something in the chat or raise your hand through the, um, the, the little thing at the bottom with participants. Sorry, I apologize for that interruption. But in terms of, undisturbed i think when i think of undisturbed i'm thinking of something that hasn't been developed hasn't been built on um right that, that it's not yeah that it's that that not it could be farm farmland would be farmland would not be considered disturbed quote unquote fields wouldn't be considered disturbed i don't know if other planning board members that's my interpretation of that and that could be something that we need to define um, that, that may be a definition that could be clarified and I will do some research and see if there are, are if there's other language and other, um, great. Uh, great. great. And, um, Jonathan Barkin also had his hand up. Um, yep. Thank you. Williamsburg road. I know we're not here to talk about next Sam, but I have to inquire just a point of information. Am I correct? Next Sam is 30 acres. And if that's the case, if it exceeds the numbers you're suggesting here, was there any discussion about the scale of that project? We are not here to discuss Nexium tonight. I, I'm asking for a point of information. Um, we had we had public hearings, we had information sessions, we had discussions. Um, there was site plan review. We did a lot of things related to the Nexium property, and we're not going to. We're really trying to focus on what we're looking at going forward. Um, so does that answer the question though, Jonathan, about that, were there questions of scale, discussions about scale? Yes, there was discussions about scale. The point um, of information I'm, I'd like is simply how large is that project? Um, I don't have the answer to well, that. Um, so Jonathan, can I, um, can I just also mention that um, we're talking about 20 acres of previously, it, in the solar array area, this does not include any buffer zone or or or, um, or other space outside of the solar array. It's just talking about the land that is reserved for the solar panels. And I don't have that. I don't have that figure right now. I'm not sure if someone else does. They could put it in the chat. The size. 
So I see that Joe has a question. Joe, um, and somebody put in the um, put in the comment. Um, but Joe has a question or comment. Um, well, I just wanted to comment on those two phrases we're discussing. I think for me, it's you start with number two. If you have prime forest land, which we're trying to define, then you're not allowed to clear more than 10 acres. Right. If you have undisturbed land, which would be, you know, forested land, for instance, or fields, um, you can then use 20 acres. Uh, right. I don't want to talk about next stamp, but I would say that that land was severely disturbed when we saw it for the first time a year and a half ago. Um, so I don't, I don't think number one was applicable to that particular site. And I suspect the 30 acres is not a bad number. But, uh, there is somebody here from NextAmp, they might be able to address that. But, uh, I, and again, I, I don't wanna drag us, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I, I, I don't wanna drag us down into NextAmp. I know it has been a concern and we've had a lot of meetings with people who have been a butters and who have had concerns about NextAmp, but unfortunately NextAmp is NextAmp. And what we're trying to do now is set up a system where we can be sure that if NextAmp, another NextAmp property uh, project comes forward, that we have enough controls over it to make sure that it's done well and safely and with minimal impact on abutters. I found a definition for undisturbed property and I will be adding that to the definitions and we'll see if that, if that satisfies the concerns here at, at, after you all see it. It's not in now. Okay. Okay. Are there, um, so that was those, that was, are there other folks from Conway with comments and, and please read the chat. People are answering some questions in the chat. Um, but anyone else from Conway who would like to make a question or a comment about the section that Susan has reviewed, uh, raise your hand. Um, or um, anyone from outside of Conway. Uh, Johanna. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Johanna Stacey. I work for the city of Northampton DPW um, and primarily for the water department um, and who owns several acres of land in Conway as it's part of the watershed for the Ryan Reservoir. Um, and so um, I just, again, sort of following up in the, in Bob Armstrong's line of questioning, I was curious about clarification for the, um, looking at how much disturbance would be allowed for forests and for undisturbed land. Um, and particularly in terms of, we have a very heavily forested watershed, which is great. <laughs> we really appreciate. Um, but I'm also imagining a scenario where a developer might take a hundred acre parcel and subdivide it and then clear 10 acres this year and 10 acres next year and 10 acres the following year. So I guess I'm wondering if how that might be addressed in the in the bylaw. Well, we have we have put in a restriction that no large scale solar facilities can be constructed within a mile of an additional large scale solar facility. There, large scale solar facilities cannot be constructed. There's a specific um, uh, electric company wiring. Thing. That's the technical term for it. Joe knows more than I do, but there's a specific um, power system that is required in order to be able to do it. And NextAmp is close to one of those, which is why NextAmp has been possible. There aren't very many of those in Conway. So the issue would be, we would want to be restricting it so that they weren't all gathered in the same geographic area. And we would do that by requiring them to be a mile apart, which kind of would keep somebody from doing some of what you're proposing but maybe not all of it. And, and also I wanna point out that right now we're talking about, um, right now we're talking about 
clearing land to make a, sol a large scale solar array. There are no Conway state, Conway laws that impact your, anybody with, somebody with 30 acres of forest could go and, and do, they'd have to file a forest management plan. I think there may be state restrictions around how much clear cutting can be done, but <clears throat> this does, this wouldn't impact somebody else. Like somebody could buy a piece of forested property and decide they wanted to make it into a sheep pasture and clear it. Um, and this doesn't restrict that. This is focused specifically on solar biolas. So I don't, um, yeah. Does that make, does that, I don't know if that's useful or not useful. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I understand there's always, there's always the potential for somebody to, to clear cut, but um, <clears throat> I think when there's a, there's a business incentive for something like solar, the potential, the potential exists. Um, right. So, so is, if, if there's a, what if there's, if you have a suggestion if you have a suggestion for a way to attend to that issue other than the make them a mile apart kind of issue, we would love to hear about that at planningboardoftownofconway.com. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's like, I mean, my understanding is clear cutting is not really allowed by the state, except in certain circumstances, including housing, that there's state rules around forestry that that's a large, you know, that's a larger issue. This is, yeah, I don't know that. This, if that makes, is that useful? But I want to, I, I want, just Johanna, I want to go back to right, we, next up was Shootsbury Planning Board is the name on the screen. And then Robert Chertak are the next two people to make comments or questions. Right. Thanks, Mary. So Michael De Chiera, uh, 56 Pratt Corner Road, Shootsbury. Um, I was mostly just listening um, since we are in the midst of more solar development in our town. And someone requested that I participate. But as a resource, I just wanted to offer two things. Um, I do think, although Susan, you mentioned that for the, the prohib prohibition on 10 acre clearing in, it addresses buffer, I don't think it reads that way. And that's something that came up. You know, so if someone is prohibited from clearing 10 acres, is that only for the 10 acres for the array or is it the array and the buffer? So I think being really clear about. Um, what you're allowed to cut down in total and for what purpose would be helpful because otherwise it's going to be a gray area. Um, the other thing is a resource. Um, we've had our bylaw for probably five years at this point. We've amended it twice. We really like it. Um, and in terms of some of the conversation now about how much forest land to cut, and I also participated in that webinar last week about the importance of um, carbon yeah. sequestration in forests. A lot of us did, right? Yeah. Um, our bylaw talks to, we have a limit of 15 acres for any one development, but then there's a requirement of four times preservation of land on the same plot. So if you were to do 15 acres, you'd have to have 75 acres. Um, so 60 would be retained forest land and 15 would be the development. So that was our approach to it just as a resource. Uh, okay, thank helpful. you. Thank you, that's helpful, Robert. And, and then Robert Churdeck. Robert Chertak, Ashfield. Um, I just want to, uh, my concern is that uh, if you say <coughs> forest clearing is, cut, uh, is limited to 10 acres, but 10 acres a year before the solar installation is yeah. planned, a year, two years, three years, somebody could cut the land and then uh, cut the forest and then it would be uh, available for placing a the solar array on the next year. I don't. Yeah. I'm I, unfortunately, I, you know, we've talked about this, um, Robert, and, and you know, if you own the land, you should be allowed to clear it. If as long as you're clearing it within the state's requirements for logging and and submit a logging plan and that sort of stuff. But I, I hear your concerns. I just don't know that there's a whole lot that we can do to keep somebody from cutting trees. I said, well, you can keep them from uh, treating the land as if it was unforested by saying if it was in forest within the last three years, say. Well, that's that's purpose. That's the purpose of the prime forested land language. 
And if there's a better way to do it, and I'll be talking with Jocelyn, who has a lot of experience and expertise in this area, um, a way of, of if, if it's capable of growing more trees, that, that's what that prime forested land definition is supposed to accomplish. Okay, thank you. We're working on it. We'll get and, there. Right, and again, if you have anybody from other, other towns with experience or anyone that has suggestions for alternative language, planning board at townofconway.com is a great place to tell us that. Um, Cause I think it's, it's 822. And are there any more comments or questions about this section or should we move on to the next section? Johanna, do you have another question or was that just, no? No, I'm sorry, I'll, oh. I'll mute myself again. Oh yeah, and Robert, if you could mute yourself, that'd be great. Anybody else? Um, and Jenny Golay, um, Jenny Golay. Hi, it's really Devlin, <laughs> uh, Selman at 2300 Main Poland Road. This is Jeff's mother's laptop we're borrowing. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for, um, yeah, making those distinctions with the 10 acres and the, and the 20, um, and also with the wetlands, like Michelle was saying, um, to give them a little bit more protection. I appreciate that. My one, um, I guess, thought was the slopes, the 15% slopes, um, uh, limiting that factor could it be like a little bit less maybe I can't I thought I saw a bylaw in another town I can't remember if it was Belcher town or Shootsbury but I thought it was like an eight percent slope that's that's my only thing for that slope for thank now. you for that comment I'll take we'll take a look at that okay thanks um thanks and and I realize that as people are coming in that may have come in later um if you haven't already gone to the link that I just linked um, on the chat to put your name and your um, where you're from on the attendance sheet, please do that. We need an attendance sheet of everyone who attended the meeting tonight. Um, any other comments or questions on section 9.1 before we leap into section 9.2? Um, leaping, leaping. We're okay. Leaping. Go for it. We have left. We have left. We have leaped Leap. into section 9.2. This deals with immediate scale solar facilities greater than 25 kilowatts. Basically this deals with a site plan review. And remember that a site plan review was also going to be required for a large scale solar facility. Um, but for smaller scale solar facilities, what we're calling intermediate scale solar facilities that will require a site plan review. It's no longer strictly as of right with a business permit as it would be for your house or a small scale um, facility on your property. It's a uh, an intermediate scale. So um, basically um, the required documents are the same. We've just um, augmented them slightly. All right, we've asked for an existing condition site plan um, showing what it's like now, what the topography would be, what the existing vegetation is, where the wetlands, where the stream, where the ledge is. We just want a little more detail. Um, we're looking for driveways, snow storage, stormwater management systems, total acreage of the disturbed area, total vegetation cleared. We just wanna know what's gonna be going on. That, that's all we're looking for here. Um, again, this is all stuff that the applicant would have to provide. Um, so most of this, as you can see from the typeface, is no change from the previous, um, from the previous bylaw. Um, we're looking for um, access. Now, the reason that some of these references, internal references have changed is because we do have a new section 9.3, which covers large scale solar facilities. And so that's why those internal references have changed. Now we have a few things that we've added to the site plan review. We're looking for pre-construction photos from the right of way and from nearest to butters. We're looking for visualization of post-construction solar development, perspectives from right of ways, nearest abutting properties, residential structures, tree coverage. We may require additional vis visualizations if necessary. Some of that will depend upon where it's located and who's, who's close by. And then we want a written statement from a qualified acoustic engineer that no continuous noise or vibrations normally perceptible above street noise without instrumentation will be able to be heard at any point more than 100 feet from the perimeter of the solar array. And this is something, again, that we've taken from other, uh, some other, and I can't tell you the citations at this point, we've been working on this for quite some time and have looked at a number of references. But this again was language from another bylaw that we seen, that we thought seemed to have um, some applicability here. 
And again, if it's if it's a simple thing and it's out of the middle of nowhere and uh, there's not, uh, you know, it's a whole bunch of farmland and and it's not going to be an issue because it's it's uh, it's far away from any possible house. We may waive some of these requirements, but that's they're here in case we want them. So let's deal with section 9.2 now. Does anybody from the planning board have any questions or concerns that they want to raise? First, is there anybody from the planning board? Uh, questions or comments on this section? Planning board? No. Anyone from the uh, select board or other town committees or boards? Put your name in the chat or wave your hand about. Bob Armstrong. Bob, Bob thank you. Thanks, Jen. Hi. Uh, so that last one about noise. When does that when does that take effect? Is that once the solar array is in operation, or is that during construction, or, or what, what, you know, you understand? Yes, I do, and I think you raise a good point, Bob, because I know that there are concerns about what the what the sound level is at the next sound facility right now, even though it's not completed. And frankly, there was a lot of noise while it was being constructed. I'm not sure that I think what we're looking for here is that there will be no continuous noise or vibrations normally perceptible after the array is completed. Um, I guess what we, what we could look for, and maybe we'll have to think about whether we should look for, is some statement as to if there's going to be noise during construction that's gonna be louder than that. How much louder, how, for how long, and is it necessary? That's sort of a question. So that might be something that we could consider. Or per perhaps something about maybe separating this out into the what's ongoing when it's operating and what's the construction facility during the construction phase. Um, uh, yeah, so that. Uh, again, so this is the site plan review, which you remember applies not only to, um, applies not only to the large scale solar facilities such as Nexamp, but also would apply to the more intermediate scale solar facilities. So question as to whether or not we really want that here or whether we want it in the large scale section be something we could consider. I know we have stuff about construction in the large scale. I just don't remember what we've covered there. That might be a better place for it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. And other Conway board or- Joe Stragowski. Joe, go for it. You're muted, Joe. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> um, I just wanted to comment on the comments being made here. The if you take our hundred foot setback and this statement about noise, what we're I believe we're saying is there should be no noise perceptible off the property because it the array is set back a hundred feet and we don't want any noise a hundred feet from the array. So basically there should be no increase in noise at the property line. Okay. Other comments or questions from Conway board members or any board members or committee members? If not, then I'll go to Conway residents. Jenny, uh, well, Devlin. Sorry, Devlin. <laughs> Sorry, uh, um, maybe I could change the name somehow. My husband could help me, he's more tech savvy. But um, I meant to comment on the setback because it was um, on the, the first article, um, bylaw article nine, um, the setback was 50 to 100 feet. Is there any way to make that like 250 feet? Because the industrial um, setback is 750 feet um, for an industrial building. And I know that um, it's, a lot more, but uh, I think that it would be more helpful for anybody that that has been put in our position with dealing with everything that's been happening to have a better buffer, a uh, bigger setback, so other people can have that um, ability to have that space, kind of like a little sacred space for sound and um, and visual um, aid. So if I can address that, uh, basically actually setback is covered in the large scale solar facility section. So can we deal with that? Um, okay, sorry. Next section. No, I know you're responding to the chart. 
which is great, but um, the actual language in the in the bylaw is in 9.3. So let's let's deal with that there, okay? Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And then Alice, you're Alice Bigliani. You're next after Devlin. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. Um, you were talking about the noise and not being audible within a certain distance from the array. <clears throat> now, in the Nexam project, we also have the pole farm at the bottom of the property owner's driveway. We don't know yet how much noise that's going to generate. I wonder what sort of noise buffer might be appropriate to write into the guidelines for both the intermediate scale and the large scale for this concern. So for other, other, so right now this is focused on the solar array and should, and there's, and that's a particular footprint, but recognizing that the footprint of the overall, um, the overall project could be bigger than the solar array. And so it's, and there could be noise coming from some other part Correct. than the solar array. So we could look at if there's a way to say something about, um, you know, the other places on, you know, the, the, the project, if we think of the solar array as like where the panels are, but yeah, right. If there's an outbuilding that has some, you know, or the pole farm or the something else, should it also that perimeter be around that too? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Other comments or questions from Conway residents? Bob Armstrong. Bob, Bob go for it. Uh, um, just related to that comment about noise, you know, we're going to start getting into the issue of how much noise the transformers make for orchard equipment or how much the noise they make at the Conway Grammar School. Uh, I mean, you're talking about how much noise do the, does the transformer make? And uh, I, if I was the attorney general, I would think this is starting to get you, you know, aimed at solar more than general across the, the, the town of Conway. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Yes, it's, I mean, the question of, Right. Are we, you know, are we restricting something with a solar facility that we're not restricting with another kind of, of use of property? Right. And, that, and, and, that, and what he's referring to in terms of the attorney general is what I think it was Beth or Susan mentioned at the beginning, which is when the whole process with the bylaw revision is after town meeting says, yeah, you know, if, if, if town meeting were to, any bylaw that the town meeting says, yep, we like this, this is what we want for a new bylaw. The bylaw then goes to the attorney, state attorney general's office to review to make sure it's not conflicting with some other state laws or whatever. And one of the things that they can say in relation to something like a solar bylaw is if it's being, um, if it's being, you know, extra restrictive or too restrictive, um, you know, like I think it's, there's some great word that you never use. It's something like, is it not practicable? You know, some way of doing it. But so anyway. Unre unreasonably restrictive. Unreasonably restrictive is the word that we're, so we're trying to attend to the concerns we have, but we can't go over into unreasonably restrictive. And it, right, if we were to make a restriction that was that, you know, the attorney general could say, well, look, you have all these other uses in town that don't have that restriction that are have a similar issue. Why are you just restricting this one? So that's thanks, Bob. Other other comments from folks in Conway. Okay, going to folks outside of Conway. Other comments or questions on this section before we go to the next section. I wanted to say something else. Mary, okay, Devlin. Oh. Yeah, just basically with the noise thing, I, I think with responding to Bob about the, and I'm going to be civil, I'm going to be calm and cool and collected with the, with the like a, a generator at a school or like downtown, people are there during the day, okay, like people are, are, are making the choice to go there, they have to, the kids have to learn, 
we moved to our house because of the quiet. Like yeah, we moved. To, so, yeah. so I just want, I just want to put it out there. Like it's an industrial park. So I think that that needs to be taken okay. into consideration Thanks, for Devlin. other, for the future. Thanks, That's all. Thank Thanks, you. Devlin. So this is, we're working on attempting that to address that. Thanks so much. Um, and let's see, I want, I want to check if there's people who have not spoken yet or any other comments on this section before we move to the, actually we're, I was asking about people, are there any people from outside of Conway? Um, or anybody else on this section? Let's, we're leaping forward to the next one. Leaping? Leaping forward. So we're on 9.3. We're on 9.3. This is the last section and we're getting close, even though there are a lot of pages to it, it should be fairly straightforward. It applies only to large scale solar facilities, okay? Greater than 250 kilowatts. So here's what it applies to, um, the large scale solar facilities. Here's what we can do. We can um, require a, we are going to require a special permit, which is requires a positive vote by a super majority vote of the planning board. Uh, it also requires a special permit and site plan review approval as specified above in section 9.2. We may waive things if it's in the, if it's, uh, in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of this article. Um, and so basically it, it, it gives us the power to do what we need to do to control the construction and maintenance of these large scale solar facilities for the purpose of avoiding site development that might result in negative environmental neighborhood or public safety impacts. And again, that's that's redundant because that's part of our, our, our mandate as a planning board, but we thought it was worth restating here. Okay, so site control is pretty much the same, operation and maintenance plan and landscape plan are pretty much the same. In all cases, I took out the words that I can't pronounce. <laughs> the ground mounted solar photovoltaic installation and replaced it with LSSF. So that's, that's the defined term now. Um, we're talking about a landscape plan. We're asking that um, existing root structures and topsoil be maintained and where naturally occurring vegetation in trees and shrubs are, is planned, they have to show that it's necessary and that its presence, uh, that the presence of those trees and shrubs would adversely affect the performance and operation of the solar installation. Utility notification is exactly as it was before. Setbacks, again, are set back to 100 feet and Devlin, or I'm not sure if it was Devlin or, or somebody else who, who mentioned that um, it's possible that this could be increased to the size for a, um, an industrial um, distance. I've made note of that and we'll take a look at that and see if that's something we want to do. Um, see if it seems to be consistent with our other, our other efforts in the town. Um, abutting towns, we've also set back hundred feet from neighboring town lines, in case you're interested, Ashfield. <laughs> um, we are limiting the ability of other large scale solar facilities to be located within a mile of each other. Um, measured in a straight line from the perimeter of the existing solar array to the nearest perimeter of the proposed solar array. We can waive this requirement if we think that it's okay, but um, uh, it's there to keep us, to, to allow us to prevent it if we so choose. Um, the size cannot exceed 20 solar. So this, this might help um, some of the concerns earlier about the size, uh, what's not permitted. I, I think it might've been Bob who raised that but the size cannot exceed 20 acres um, unless we determine it's appropriate. Um, and in that case, we can add a, an additional two and a half acres. And I'm not sure where that two and a half number comes from, but it's from, some, from the planner. Um, I think it's from the planning commission's model bylaws. Uh, if it's on glacial till and sandy soil, which is not heavily forested, we can allow it to be slightly increased. The pertinent structures is exactly the same, no changes. Consultations. Um, we're making sure that um, all of the various departments and entities that could possibly be um, impacted by this uh, special permit process, including the building inspector, the board of health, the select select board. Oh, one word. Uh, I have to make that change. The select board, uh, the historical commission, the conservation commission. All of these other um, uh, departments and entities can be consulted if necessary, um, <clears throat> to, uh, 
to um, uh, it, it, we're, we're recommending that they be consulted. We go down to lighting and signage. These are pretty much the same. Utility connections, pretty much the same. Now we're on to project visibility. We want it to be designed to minimize its visibility, including preserving natural vegetation to the maximum extent possible. And we recognize that there are times when that's not going to be possible. So for example, if, um, I don't think it's a south facing field, but if the Boydens wanted to put a solar array on their farmland, they could do that. And there isn't probably any way that that could be screened. So we can't unreasonably restrict it, but we're trying to do it to the maximum extent possible. Um, and screened from all abutting properties. Um, setback areas shall be, can be motiv modified only for additional screening. <clears throat> we're adding that additional screening be, be provided if, additional, if existing vegetation is not um, going to be uh, sufficient. And tree cutting would not be permitted if it reduces the, the effectiveness of the year round screening. We're asking that they show the types, sizes, and locations, the plantings at height, staggered, diversity of plant species, trying not to get um, anything from the prohibited plant list, mostly evergreens, evenly spaced, completed prior to the connection of the installation. Plants should be maintained and replaced if unhealthy by the owner operator of the installation for the life of the facility. So that's, that's an effort to try to um, control the screening a little more adequately perhaps than we have been uh, with Nexamp. We also are recommending that the open area be seeded as a pollinator mix. And that again, um, mowing only done to retain natural functioning. We're talking about what can't be used, herbicides, rodenticides, other pesticides can't be used, um, except unless it's been approved for control of an invasive species. Um, or if it's a, a dual use uh, facility, such as um, uh, if there are animals or something grow, um, being raised underneath. As far as location is concerned, we want it to minimize the, uh, the impacts to existing agricultural line, compatible with additional agricultural use if possible, um, minimize impacts to environmentally sensitive land. Again, this is talking about clearing of natural vegetation minimize the use of concrete, other impervious materials to the maximum extent possible. Habitat impacts, wetlands impacts. These are all things that we are requiring. It's again, this is some of this is really redundant because this exists elsewhere in our, in our um, bylaws, but we thought it was important to restate it here because it's an important concern with regard to these large scale solar facilities. Okay, so here's noise. To minimize the impact of any continuous noise or vibrations, all point source noise generators must be located centrally within the solar array at a minimum of 150 feet from the property lines of any adjacent properties. Um, so I, I don't know if this addresses some of the concerns that were raised earlier, but I'm sure we'll in a little while. Um, again, height will not exceed 12. I talked about why it might want, we want, might want it to exceed 12. And in that case, it would be, um, permissible with our approval. Stormwater management plan. This is something that was not in the original um, bylaw. We've put it in, we think it's important. Uh, I'm not gonna go into it in too much detail. It's pretty, pretty detailed, but again, this is something that would be prepared by the applicant. It has nothing to do with the town. Um, it just has to do with our seeing that this is being performed. Safety and environmental standards, including glare. Um, uh, monitoring and maintenance. Most of this is exactly as it was. Um, construction monitoring. This is something that we thought was really important. We wanted to have a third party inspector selected by an acting under the direction of the building commissioner or the planning board to be employed to monitor compliance with all approvals and conditions during the construction at the applicant's expense. So again, if we're talking about construction and, and noise during construction, this might be a place that we would want to add additional language. If you had additional language you thought would be a good thing to add here, please feel free to submit it to planningboard.tanaconway.com. And a reporting. Um, this again is, is information that was in other bylaws or, or in the model bylaws from the planning commission that we thought was useful to have here. Um, and I note that select board is one word here, which is good, I got that part. Transfer of ownership. Again, this is occasionally a problem. These things are sold and you need to be sure that the owner, that the new owner has to abide by everything. And then there's a whole bunch about abandonment and decommissioning that most of this was in 
the original bylaw. What wasn't there was um, a part about restoration of the property if um, if it was deforested uh, for the purposes of um, creating the large scale solar facility. A financial surety is a bond that um, ensures that um, we have enough money to take it down if it's abandoned. So that's a, a long section, but most of it is, um, there are just chunks I think that people might have concerns and questions about. So I'm gonna go back very quickly to the beginning. And Mary, you're on taking questions and comments. Okay, so we know the routine. So first, any planning board comments or questions? Planning board. No. Okay, other Conway boards or committees? No, uh, Joe did have his hand up. Sorry, Mary. Okay, sorry, I didn't see it. Joe, go for it. Um, in, in the section on visibility, um, I, I guess I strongly feel that there's a change needed there. Something to the effect that either the preference or the actual testing be done at eye level around the foundation of the dwelling. It seems to me that, that asking a developer to go all the way around the perimeter of someone's property, that I can, I can think, and, and like in my own case, I have 20 acres of land. I would not expect that I should be able to walk all the way around my property and never see anything. My neighbors could put up houses, they can cut down the trees. I don't think it's fair to the solar people to say you can't see solar panels anywhere on my properties. I think the effort needs to be focused on the dwelling. I'm open to comments. I have a comment. Wait, 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 hold on. Devlin. We're still, we're still okay. using okay. the, Sorry. the I system. Thought you said I'm open to okay, so. In okay. order. Okay, so we're gonna do, so I, there was Joe had a comment, Bob had a comment, Jerry LeBlanc had his hand up, then Devlin will be well. Actually, Bob had a com Bob has comments or questions that I'm going to ask if there's anyone else from boards or um, committees. Then, if then we will go to Conway residents. Jerry's had his hand up for a while, and then I would pick Devlin after Jerry when we get to the Conway residents section. So, Bob, thank you. Uh, no you quickly went down some things that I, I read. I didn't quite get them. And it, it, you talked about trees and shrubs. It was a, it was a part of in that section. Sure. Let me get there. Great. Um, it's, it, it's talking about vegetation and screening. If additional plantings are required for screening, a planting plan shall be submitted. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, okay. I, I thought, no, I was talking about something else. So maybe we'll get there. I mean, I, I thought there was a restriction of not removing trees and shrubs unless they interfere with the operation of the solar panels. Okay. Let me find that section. I don't think it's back. Here it goes. Where removal of naturally occurring vegetation, such as trees and shrubs is planned. The owner must demonstrate that the removal of this vegetation is necessary and that the presence of the trees and shrubs, its presence, the presence of the trees and shrubs, adversely affects the performance and operation of the solar installation. So, so in general, this property is gonna be mowed. And, and, you know, I mean, are you saying that they are not allowed to mow the property ever? No, we're talking about, I don't think mowing is the same as removing trees and shrubs. Uh, in order for them to build this thing, they are gonna to have to be driving trucks and heavy equipment all over this, the area of where this thing is. And they're gonna be driving those trucks and excavators all over those trees and shrubs. Uh, I can't imagine- uh, and, and, if, and if that removal was necessary and would not be, they couldn't build it otherwise, we're just saying, we don't want you just going in there and cutting stuff just willy-nilly, basically. Show us that you really need to cut it down and then we'll take a look at it. Uh, okay. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Bob, but I, I, I don't think this prohibits people from removing trees and shrubs if it's necessary to do what they need to do. So say that these trees and shrubs are gonna grow up and they need to be 
pruned or, you know, I mean, will this shrub have to be maintained at its original three foot height for the life of the solar facility? At its original three foot height? Well, I guess the hope is that the trees and shrubs would grow. In the middle of the, of the, of the, where the solar facility is. So wait, are we, wait, we're not talking about screening. We're talking about naturally occurring vegetation. So somebody that's within basically... the solar array. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they can show it. That would obviously be necessary. Um, if it's going to block the sun or if it's going to interfere with the performance of the, of the solar array, that would be, to my mind, would be something that would be permissible. Does that answer, is, or Bob, do you have a suggestion of how to change the language to somehow address your concern? I think you should leave this out. Okay, we'll take that into consideration. Thanks, Bob. So, okay. So, uh, okay. So that, um, and I, except please explain what, why take it, why it's like, we're basically saying, show us that you need to clear the, clear the area that you need to clear, or, you know, and remove trees and shrubs. Um, show us how that fits in with the, you know, performance and operation of the solar installation. So, so I mean, let's say the panels have, go, are no higher off the ground. They start at two, two, two feet high and they go to six feet high. And I'm just mm -hmm. imagining what's up at NextAmp. Then they're not allowed to cut down anything that's higher. They could argue anything higher than two feet is going to shade our panels. But anything that well, then that then that presence would adversely affect the performance and operation of the solar. Right. But anything that's less than two feet high, you would say it's not going to shade the panels, so you have to leave those shrubs there. And they're going to say we we maintain the ground by mowing the entire facility. What, twice a year, in which case they're going to be mowing those two foot shrubs. Yeah, I'm not sure that that um, that mowing. I mean, we mow our front field twice a year, and we don't cut down any shrubs when we're doing it. I mean, I think it's a mowing. I think we're talking about taking down trees and shrubs, which are, I believe to my mind, means something bigger than that. But there may be a way of structuring this sentence so it's a little more clear. When I mow my field, there are no shrubs left. I mean, I mow them six inches high. I don't want right. to mow- Well, they weren't shrubs to begin with. They were little, little things. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I want to point out that it's 8.55. I I'm sorry. And I, I, write, I want to know if there's anyone else from a Conway board or committee that has a comment at this point. Okay, then I'm gonna go to Jerry and then Devlin. Thank you, Mary. Um, I do wanna comment on two different parts. Um, one on the visibility part and in response uh, to Joe. Uh, I do agree with Joe that probably the visibility should be um, tied to the dwelling, absolutely. Um, and then I think just to take that to the next step, it's something we discussed when we were on the, uh, on the property here uh, a week or so ago. I think it is important to include what is visible from inside the dwelling. Um, when, it, when, a, uh, when what's going on outside is actually invasive uh, into the dwelling, that constitutes an even greater violation of personal privacy and personal space, I think. So I'd like to see, you know, that tightened up a little bit, or at least, you know, have that um, be included. And I agree with Joe, like, yeah, not from every point on my property should I be uh, um, saved from any visibility, but it's really in the dwelling space, the places that are considered private and uh, where a person has a reasonable expectation of privacy and tranquility and not to have invasive, um, you know, lights, sounds, or, you know, complete change of character of the uh, environment. So that was my first bit. And then second is in regards to site control and construction monitoring. Um, so 
I'm not sure if those two things are the same or they're just, they're slightly different. Um, I do like the idea of having a dedicated um, third party inspector. Uh, that certainly sounds great to me. Um, we definitely have had a problem with Nexamp in that, you know, we, we had dialogue with them multiple times about trash from their um, project coming onto our property. And it wasn't until we filed with the DEP that they actually did anything about it. So we really need some teeth uh, in that area for there to be monitoring of the construction site. And so that is also where I think there's an opportunity for, um, you know, maybe uh, it'd be best if I just write this in, but it's- Yes, that would like be a noise. great idea, Jerry, really. Yeah, yeah especially because if there are details it's, it's 858 and mm -hmm. I would like to say that we will go till 10 after nine. Okay. But if you have specific comments of specific- If you have some specific suggested language, that would be enormously helpful. Yeah, I'll, write, I'll write something into the, to the planning board. Uh, in the planning board right. account, Thank you. Account. Thank yeah. you. So I want to check and see if there's anyone. Uh, then Devlin is next. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that if if we could get the 750 foot industrial setback limit, I think there would be a lot less um, of a problematic. Like, I think it would avoid having to do screening. Um, it would have. It would have. It would really make it in a, a, like a world of a difference um, for the sound and the visibility if that simple. It's, it seems a lot bigger than what it is, but I think just having that be 750 feet uh, would would make the big the world of difference and make Thank things you. a lot easier. That's all. Thanks, Thank Evelyn. And then um, Alice would like to make a comment. And um, it looks like Jerry has, I wanna see if there's anyone else from Conway. Oh, okay. Then she whose name I can't see after, after um, so it's gonna be Alice. And then she whose name I can't see and then, um, and then uh, it's Jocelyn and then, okay, so this is Conway. So wait, I'm just gonna, I wanna say, Alice, um, uh, Jerry, person with Jerry, um, and then Jocelyn and Phil, and then Johanna is the list I have right now. Um, okay, so Alice, go for it. Alice, if you can tell me what section you're referring to, I can scroll up and find it. I'm not referring to any section. I'm re referring to the entire bylaw, which you are um, planning to bring to town meeting. Um, as I've typed in the chat, I am concerned that we have more to learn yet from the Nexamp project, which is not yet up and running. I was proposing that the bylaw be um, bringing it to town meeting be tabled until we have more experience with the operation of that one first large scale solar facility. Somebody has written back saying that um, if we delayed that for a whole year, um, we couldn't have a moratorium on new projects and any new projects would default to the existing bylaw. I right. understand that. Um, I would just hope Alice, if this Alice. bylaw does go in that there could be revisions within the following year, if we learn significant stuff from the operation of the next Nexam project. Thanks, Alice. Thanks, Alice. So what we're taking right now is comments on this, the potential revisions to the bylaw. When we get to town meeting floor, then there can be comments like you saying you don't want to pass this. Um, and if they want it, we could do revisions every year if Good. somebody brings revisions. That, Good. but. And that was, that was Beth, the chair of the planning board, who brought up that if this bylaw, if bylaw revisions do not get voted through in this town meeting, whatever, you know, the final form is, if they don't get voted in this town meeting, then the existing bylaw would stand for any projects that came to town. There would be no more moratorium. And the, yeah, and there could, it could be brought again. So I... So anyway, so that's, thank you, Alice. But I wanna move on because we have short time. I wanna get to comments on specific sections. Phil um, didn't put his hand up or I didn't see it when it was time for the um, 
other board members. So I'm going to go to Phil and then Gianna, then Jocelyn, then Johanna. So, so when, when, when I sort of, when you look at these in totality, you, 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 one of the things that you're struck with is that this will surely increase the cost of putting um, these facilities in. And, and maybe that's an inappropriate thing to, to, to focus on, but, um, you know, would this double the cost? Would this triple the cost? And, um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's the totality of everything. There's, you know, every single suggested uh, addition to change has a use and, and it makes sense in and of itself. Um, or at least you can certainly, reasonable people could certainly say that. And, um, but the totality of it is going to make this, these harder to, to do. So do you have project. specific questions or comments about any of the specific, right now we're really focused on specific comments and questions to the language that we have right here. That again is a kind of comment that will be, you can make in town meeting or that you can send us a planning bat or to townofconway.com. You know, permitting costs money. Permitting costs money. Um, solar facilities are commercial facilities that make a lot of money. And permitting is, is built into their budgets. I, I have friends who do this kind of work. It's built into the budget. So yes, could this mean more cost for some of the things? Sure. Um, but but anyway, that's just my response. I So particularly comments by email are great. Now it looks like Joe has a comment and I, I promise that I will get to folks who are not board members, but any, Phil, do you have any specific comments or specific of this section? Like things you'd like changed in this section? Okay, thanks. Um, so Joe. Um, I would just like to comment on the 750 feet. That bylaw was written for projects that cleared at least 50 acres of land. And it was particularly focused on things like natural gas pipelines, where the potential for explosions and things of that nature were possibilities, very high risk situation. I don't believe that 750 feet is appropriate for something that were, is visually uh, at best an issue, possibly a little bit of noise. I did a rough calculation for our one acre site of panels, which is the low end of section 9.3, it would require 70 acres of land to accomplish that. If we go to the 20 acre site, it would take 135 acres of land. I really feel that's quite excessive to deal with the, with the uh, noise and the visibility. And I think we have to stick with screening and other abatement methods rather than distance. Thanks, Joe. Okay, um, any other board or committee members before we go to Gianna. Okay, we're going to Gianna. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the things when there's construction being done um, is the work hours, um, defining those would be a nice thing. Um, there've been, even in the maintenance, um, we're still in the construction here, but there've been tree when they were doing the land clearing there were trees getting cut first thing 6 a.m 7 a.m on a sunday morning saturday morning um all every day of the week uh we've had giant trucks up and down that before 6 a.m rumbling past um so i do recommend some sort of limitation on work hours um and then um the noise piece of that, perhaps it's worth considering the place of a thing if it's residential or in a if it's in a residential or a commercial district, perhaps those would have different considerations. Um, and that's my comment for now. Um, well, one other thing, which was the, the it said something about the um, uh, it was under the noise part where it said the buildings would be 150 feet set from the boundaries. Um, the building where the generators and such would be like 100, yeah, this one here, thank you. Um, centrally located with a minimum of 150, okay, a minimum. The thing is, is when we start studying some of the, those low hum things, those, uh, you know, when you're looking at the, um, the wave of it, 
does that make a difference or not? I guess that's something worth considering like with the sound wave. If it's a long wave, is that adequate to protect? Hey, Joanna, if you have, if you have um, a resource or some references that you can send us that would help inform us on that section, that'd be and as far as the construction is concerned, it sounds to me like maybe we could require a construction plan that says, what are you gonna do and when are you gonna do it? Um, and that might help deal with the five o'clock truck noise. And, the, and in, terms of, in terms of the noises and vibrations, you know, there's a requirement for the sound and an acoustic engineer. Oh, right. We do have that right. off on, on this. So that would be also something where they could, you know, we would have that, mm -hmm. that expertise at hand. Okay. Um, we are at 907 and I believe Jocelyn kindly said that Jocelyn would um, send final comments, but um by uh, by email, which we still appreciate. Yeah, two hours from now, you think, oh, I should have said something, plan a bo planning board of Tana Conway, but Johanna had um, her hand up. So I wanted to go to Johanna, or Johanna, I'm not sure how do you pronounce your name. It's Johanna, actually. Okay. Um, just uh, one quick comment regarding um, sections G, the approval section and also section M, the annual reporting section. Um, Those are, wait, let me get down there. Sure. It, it's more of a general comment. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but um, as a water supplier, and there's a lot of land that falls within a public water supply watershed in Conway. There's about seven and a half square miles in the southeast corner for South Deerfield and Northampton together. Um, so given this, it would be, um, it would be great or it would be really nice to see if public water suppliers were notified of an application. Okay. Um, can you send along the language that you think should be added? Okay, we can do that. Great. Um, and it would be great to also be included in the annual reporting to see if there were any significant erosion issues or herbicide use or something like that that came up. Okay, again, if you if you have if you have a that we, you think we should add, then then send it along and we'll take a look at it and that'd be very helpful. We'll and, do that. We'll do that. And, and abutters, whenever there's a special permit process, all abutters get notified, including water suppliers. But any language that would add to that, you know, list of commit who gets, you know, and you know the list, the what you just point out. Give us the language. Great. Yeah, and we might not necessarily be in a butter. We might be eight hundred feet of the watershed. Yeah. So then, okay, we wouldn't necessarily get notified. Okay, so yeah, please give us some language. And you know, it's it's nine ten, and I just got a private message that someone is turning into a pumpkin, and that would <laughs> really it would get really unpretty if we turned into pumpkins. So what I would ask is. Could you stop sharing screen for a sec, Susan? I can. And Mary, just a reminder, we need to. Yes, I know that. I know. And we do the, need to we need to go back and do the roll call vote for the other. Uh, yes. Yeah. And we are going to do that. But I, what I want to do is, um, is I want to say, um, uh, you know, planning board to town of Conway .com. Planning board, planning board of of by March 30th. That's Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. Please send us any additional comments and such. Um, I see Jonathan just put something about construction hours um, being outlined. If you, you know, that's the kind of comment that'd be really helpful to have a specific, please, please add this, send us an email about that. And, um, and I will try and find the link to the, I'm gonna find the link to that full, um, uh, that full document. If you want to read it more of the fine print, I'll put that in the link in the chat right now. But then I would say, um, unless there's something else urgent right now related to this second pl public hearing that we have going, that I would move that we close this public hearing, that we close this public hearing and, um, and that we would then reopen the first public hearing and have you know do that the formality that we need to do is that okay right, so 
So Mary, now we're going to have a roll call vote as to whether or not to close this portion of the public hearing. Correct. So we're, or, or if it's not, oh, unanimous. if it's unanimous, didn't we decide that if it's unanimous, we don't have to. Go if it's back? unanimous, then it's okay. So I move that we close this public hearing. Does somebody want to second that? I second. Um, Susan seconds and um, all in favor, uh, raise your hand. Aye. Susan, Beth, Mary, Jen. So that was unanimous um, of closing that hearing. Now we're going to, um, I move that we reopen the public hearing um, that was about article six and the language around the select board. I, I move that somebody want a second that we're reopening that one. Um, second with Jen. Then all in favor of opening that, raise your hand. I see um, we have a unanimous vote, yes, that we're reopening it. So now we're gonna do the, um, so, and we didn't, I mean, really what we're voting on is opening and closing. That's all we're voting on tonight. So <laughs> we, we've reopened that. If there's anybody else who has any comments about changing select board of selectmen to select board, now is your last chance for this meet night to say something about that. Tom, do you wanna say something about that? Yeah, just that um, this mirrors another article that's being proposed uh, for the um, for the general bylaws. Okay. So the, the planning board bylaws have to be done separately from the general. So, so, we're, so there's going to be another one for the general bylaws. Oh, okay. Thank you. We're changing the mention of select board in the zoning and you're changing it in the general. Right. Okay. So we will get to submit to you this, our final language on this. Okay. And um, so any other commentary on that, this one? No? Okay, so I move that we close this uh, hearing about Article 6. Um, anybody want to second that? Uh, sure. Susan seconded. Um, and all in favor, um, raise your hand if you're in favor of closing this one because it's such a good time. We're done with it. Okay. And any other questions or comments. Um, so we're done with that. We're done. 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 We're Good, done. Night. Good night. Thank Beth, you very Beth much. Beth and Joe, I'll be in touch. Okay. Yeah. We got some work to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye yeah. guys. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you everyone so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Bye Jamie. Bye Joe. Thank you.